Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are you today? This is Supernova. And I want to talk about when your NPD slash narcissistic person comes back. I'm going to do one for the ladies and the fellas because we've all gone through this where we're in a part of our lives where the person who was narcissistic has discarded us, as they say on the internet, has basically ghosted us or told us the relationship is over. And we had that sinking realization that we have been played because a week, two weeks, maybe a month or so months later, they're with someone new, right? And of course, you're going to go into a tailspin because you're hurt. I mean, this was supposed to be forever. This was supposed to be the relationship, the love of your life. You've invested so much time, money, resources, emotional labor, all that good stuff. And then just like it was the weather, they're with someone new and you're left with a broken heart. You want them to come back. You want another chance. You think that you did something wrong. And so this is the dance between you and the narcissist. And um, I'm going to tell you that first, it's not your fault. See, narcissistic people bore very easily and are very status hungry. I know you've heard me say this multiple times before. And so when they think they figured you out, uh, then you bore them. They don't like monotony. They like drama, right? Um, And so they're going to go look elsewhere with people they've already had waiting in the wings to give them the thrill that they need. Because narcissistic people, be they male or female, can't really feel. They're kind of numb inside. And so the only thing that makes them feel is drama. What happens when their select flavor of drama runs dry? They come back to you because you're already primed for the drama. Now, this could be mm, a month, two months, years, two years, 10 years. But remember that it's very, very, very rare. Not saying that it doesn't happen, but it does happen. That narcissists never come back. But I'll do another video about when they will never come back. And it's it does happen. <laughs> I've experienced it myself. Um, thank God. But 90 to 95 percent of the time um, from my calculations is that um, they always come back and I want to tell you first why they come back I want to tell you second the signs that they're trying to wiggle their way back into your life like the worms that they are and then third I'm going to tell you what you should do about it And I'll give you two flavors of the third option, which will be for the men and for the women. Let's get started, shall we? Let's talk about why narcissistic people come back. And this is from my own experience. And I am talking from a point of romantic relationships, parents, friends, So they all do the same thing. It's just different flavors of it. And they all have the same reason of wanting to come back to you. Okay, I want to start off first by telling you how narcissists are made, right? Narcissists are made from trauma. And the trauma typically is going to be some form of abuse, if not multiple forms of abuse, as well as um, an unstable environment that they were raised in. It doesn't matter if they're rich or they're poor. If they have been abused in some form or fashion and they don't know how to deal with stability, they learn from a very young age that being superficially charming um, and being very, very witty and intelligent is a way for them to survive. Um, We all have defense mechanisms, and I'm not telling you to be sorry for these assholes because, you know, you can change your life if you really want to. But I'm just telling you how they're made and what they look for, right, when they're coming back. So now that you know that this defense mechanism within a narcissist is one where they don't want to feel, but they want to 
take feelings from others and basically live vicariously through their feelings so they won't do any emotional labor. I'm going to tell you why they're going to come back. Narcissistic people typically come back because their choice after you failed. Um, The people that they decided they were going to get more affection and attention and validation from petered out, and now they don't have any options. Narcissists are like hyenas. Um, They go for scraps. They don't hunt for new kill. They try to groom people um, by spending time with them, money with them, um, you know, whatever. They try to groom people to have them waiting in the wings in case something falls through. Um, I had a parent who was very narcissistic. And when she decided that she couldn't get love from me, she got love from people in her church or she got love from people at her job or she went on dates. But if I didn't give her the attention that she wanted, she went elsewhere for it. And then when the people at church didn't give her enough, when her dates petered out or when her coworkers couldn't stand her anymore, she would always come back to me. Basically, they have multiple people spinning plates for them emotionally. And when they feel that you're not giving them enough, then they'll go elsewhere. But, you know, you're a nice person. Because if you're listening to this, you're typically nice. And you're like, how could this person screw me over so much? Well, that's because they got bored of you and they decided to go elsewhere. And then other people who are not as nice as you decided that they saw their game and told them to kick rocks. So they're kicking rocks right back to you. So know that they didn't have this epiphany that they uh, they wanted you to be the love of their life, um, that they wanted to have a relationship, that um, they knew they were wrong. They did it because you're a nice person and you'll probably accept them back. And they're basically coming back with their hat in their hands saying, give me another chance until I can find someone else who is better than you. That's the why. Now let's talk about the signs that they're trying to wiggle their way back into your life. And these are going to be doozies because they're going to try and do it in so many different ways. And it's so pathetic how they do it. If you you uh, have mutual friends, but you no longer talk to this person. The mutual friends will all of a sudden start talking about uh, this person to you, right? How sad this person is and how they look like they're lonely and they talk about you sometimes and X, Y, and Z. This is all a ploy. Passive aggressive narcissists or fragile narcissists will not openly come to you, right? They want to go ahead and bait you into coming to them, right? Because narcissists are lazy people. They don't like doing work that they don't want to do. So they're going to use whatever they can or whomever they can that's connected to you to basically relay the message. Now, they also do this online as well. If you're like me and you just don't block anybody because, you know, you're just gangster like that, um, these narcissistic people will have these subliminal kind of vague book texts. These weird, vague social media texts and posts about losing the love of their life. Or if you guys had things that you liked, they'll start posting about those things. Could be restaurants or jokes or whatever. But they're going to start like, you know, um, posting things that's going to get your attention and see if you bite. The more obvious uh, narcissistic folk will be blatant. They'll give you a phone call. They'll ask you out for dinner. They'll come to your house. They will come by with roses and whatever. Um, They will holler how they've changed. Like they'll be more blunt about their need for your attention and supply. So that is is a few of the signs, right? But basically, if it's anything that kind of makes your stomach or your intuition go, wait, what is that? That's the narcissist or narcissistic person trying to get your attention and see if you are still vulnerable to their attentions and their affections, 
right? So I've already told you why. I've already told you the signs. Now I'm going to tell you what you can do about it. And this is going to be the fun part. So for the ladies, this is what you're going to do when they come back the third time or the fourth time when you finally are just like, oh, okay, you're going to come back now? Cool. You are going to let them dance around you. Not physically, but you're going to let them do all of the hard work. You're going to let them do all the calling and you don't call back. You're going to let them do all the DMing and you don't DM back. What's even better is that you read it and then just ignore it. You're going to let them send you all the gifts because they will do that. They're going to try and get your attention somehow, some way. You are going to let your friends, your mutual friends, tell them about this person. And you're just going to change the subject. Obviously change the subject. You're not even going to get mad about it. You're just going to go ahead and just let this person be in this vacuum of them by themselves. This will go ahead and start those shameful wounds that they have that they're not loved and they're not good enough. So then they're going to ramp it up even more. Then they're going to try and get your attention in some ways possible, which is going to be gifts. Typically, narcissistic people try to buy you out. They all do. It's very rare that they're going to just start with the physical affection and whatever. They're going to try and get you gifts. This has happened with family members. This has happened with friends. This has happened with lovers. They always start shelling out the skrill somehow, some way to go ahead and get you to um, forgive them. Let them do it. Let them break their wallets. Let them get into debt. Let them take out those loans for you let them. Why? Because, you know, honestly, you deserve it. Especially if they've been abusive to you, you completely and utterly deserve it. Now that sounds horrible and cold, but you know, you're not listening to me because you want to be a good person. You're listening to me because you want revenge. And this is typically a revenge (laughs) channel. So, um, you are talking to the queen of empath petty. So I'm just going to be real with you. Let them break the bank. Let them take out two mortgages for you. Let them go ahead and do all that stuff. But you know what? If they put you on trips, if they like, hey, let's go ahead and let's go to the Bahamas, have your own hotel room. You don't give them any sex. You don't give them any affection. You let them basically treat you like the princess that you are. Last, after you drain them dry... And they're starting to be expecting to like sex or are we in a relationship? Are we this or that? Then you just dump them and you dump them the best way possible. You dump them with someone else that you have been dating with on the side. They don't need to know and make sure this person looks better, makes more money or whatever, because, you know, it's only fair, right? I mean, they basically had, you know, their uh their second and third picks and so do you now for the fellas so you got a narcissistic woman right you got a woman who's like oh i came back and you should love me and this and this and this you want to drive her crazy have a lot of other women around you and if you want to drive her even crazier have them all looking worse than she does You see, a narcissistic woman, she is really about her beauty. Oh, she's about her beauty, right? Um, And there's one thing that a narcissistic woman cannot stand is that you are with someone and you are a high value male that's with a woman who looks worse than her. Better than her, she can go ahead and be catty, but worse than her It's going to drive her up the wall. And I'm not saying you should just pick, you know, ugly chicks because that's not the case. You should actually pick women who are decent women, right? Decent women, date, you know, be a gentleman, but women who have their good head on their shoulders, but they're not super glam, right? This will drive a narcissistic woman up the wall. I wish I can give you more advice with that, but literally a female narcissist, if you really want to get to her, just date somebody who's normal. Well, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm going to get back to my coffee and my work, but 
I hope that these tips help you. And they're tested. So just give it some time, have some patience, and I hope that your revenge is sweet and swift. Have a good morning.